Okay, mean absolute deviation. We use it for statistics. It's a statistical way to evaluate data. The mean absolute deviation is an extra statistical way to evaluate data. You already know. You already know how to find the mean of data. You already know how to find the median of data. You already know how to find the mode of data. You can already find the range of data. You can also find the lower quartile. And you can also find the upper quartile. These are pieces of statistical analysis that you already know how to do. For example, the mean is when you add the numbers and divide by the number of numbers. The mean is when you add the numbers, so you add up all of the data, get an answer, then divide by the number of numbers, the number of pieces of data. The key is you add the numbers first. You cannot type it into your calculator as a chain. That's the number one mistake that people make. The median is when the numbers are in order. People forget that part all the time. It's the middle. The numbers must be in order from least to greatest, greatest to least. They've got to be in numerical order. If there are two numbers smack dab in the middle, you find their mean. You add them together and divide by two. The mode is the most common number. The range is the maximum. What does that mean? Biggest number, greatest number, minus the minimum. What does that mean? The smallest. The least. The least. The smallest. The lower quartile is the median below the median. And the upper quartile is the median above the median. So we're adding to this, all of this knowledge, we're adding the mean absolute deviation. We're adding which we abbreviate as MAD. And there are three steps to finding the mean absolute deviation. 
the first step is to find the mean of the data. Which you already know how to do. Step two is a little bit more work. It's not ridiculous. But it's more work. Step two is you subtract the mean from each piece of data. and write it down. So every piece of number that you, or every number that you added up here to get your mean, you take the mean and you subtract that number from each piece of data and write it down. Now this is where the word absolute comes into play. We only, want positive values. So if you get an answer of negative three, you use the absolute value of it and you write three. If you get the number nine, that's fine because it's positive. But if you get a negative number, I want you to take the negative off. I want the positive value. And then step number three, is find the mean of the values found in step two. And I'm going to do an example with you. So here's your data set. Write down this data set. 87. 94. 95. 77. So step number one is to find the mean of the data. So I'm going to take my calculator and I'm going to add 87 plus 94 plus 72 plus 65 plus 97 plus 77. I'm going to find the mean of the data. So I have to find their answer first, and then I'm going to divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pieces. The mean is 82. Step number two is subtract the mean from each piece of data and write it down. I only want positive values. So step number two, I'm going to take 82 and I'm going to subtract it from each number. So 87 minus 82 and I get 5. So that's my first piece of data. 94 minus the mean was 82. And I'm going to write down 12. 
72 minus 82. But I don't want negative 10. I only want positive values. So the absolute value of that, which is 10. 65 minus 82. Ninety seven minus eighty two, fifteen. And seventy seven minus eighty two is negative five, so I'm going to put five. Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of this is to see is the mean a good representation of the data? Well, if I look the mean, the average number, this is five away from it. So that's a pretty good representation. 82 is a pretty good representation of 87. But is 82 a good representation of 94? No. Well, no, it's 12 pieces away. And 82 is 10 spaces away from 72, so that's not very good. It's 17 spaces away, right? So we're using this to determine is the mean a good representation. And it's okay to sometimes have big numbers in there, but you wanted to balance it out with really small numbers. So now I find the mean of these, of the difference. So 5 plus 12 plus 10 plus 17 plus 15 plus 5 is 64 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's 10.6 repeating. The calculator rounds that seven for you. So here's what you look for. The closer the MAD is to zero, the better the mean represents the data. So this is a mean absolute deviation of 10.6. not a very good representation of the data because the closer it is to zero the better the mean represents the data